Today we're going to go over the steps you'll need to take to turn your trailer into something like this. To get started on this project, we took a sanding screen on a black pad on our buffer and went over the whole surface to get rid of any dirt or any of the tire marks that happened to be left on the trailer from the VW bus. We used a palm sander to get rid of some additional oil that had been dripped from the VW bus. After sanding, we vacuumed the whole surface just to make sure there was no sawdust or dirt that happened to be left on the surface. Now that the floor is sanded and vacuumed, we get to have some fun. We're going to apply our Elasto Shield. To start, we're going to put some fiber tape along all of the seams or the joints in the wood on the floor. This helps protect it. These are kind of the weak points. As the trailer's bouncing along the road, as you're doing 90 miles an hour, passing people on the right, that's going to uh, give us some extra strength. So hopefully those weak spots don't spider crack up through the epoxy or even break all the way. To do that, we're just gonna use some, some drywall fiber tape, put it down over the joints, then we're gonna hit those with some uh, Elasto Shield on a chip brush, let that dry, and then we'll put the Elasto Shield over the whole surface. Now that we've got everything masked off, it's time to put down our elasto shield over the surface, but we're going to cut out the edges before we get started to roll out the whole surface. Just to make it easier, you could mask up a little bit higher and not worry about cutting in, but we'll just go ahead and cut out. Now that we're all cut in, we're just going to roll out our elasto shield as if we were painting a wall or in this case a floor. You can use a paint tray or just dip straight into the bucket as I'm barely housebroken and if you ask my wife there's some debate on if that's even true. I'm just going to dip right into the bucket so here we go. We've waited anxiously overnight for the Elasto Shield to dry. Now it's time to really have some fun. We're going to apply our ColorTech 600 WB in a custom color to match the flake that we're going to broadcast into it. I usually like to match the flake as close as possible so that if you happen to miss anything or there's a little bit of the floor showing through, the epoxy is colored close enough to the flake that it, you won't notice it. Uh, we're, we're doing kind of a funky blend today with the flake and uh, it's kind of a blue color so we made up a blue epoxy to match that. We've gone ahead and we've taken down the masking that we put up earlier. There's a nice crisp line from the Elasto Shield and we want to have a nice crisp line with the epoxy as well. So we put up some new masking and now we're going to mix up our epoxy, we'll cut it in, then we'll squeegee and back roll the epoxy after which we'll throw some flake. The color tech mix ratio is 4 to 1. So after we put our part A and part B into a separate bucket, 
we mixed it up for about three minutes just to make sure that it was consistent, that all of the part B and part A had mixed together. That makes sure that we get uh, a good, even, consistent floor and also that the epoxy will react and go hard. You can see we've already cut in around the edges with just a cheap disposable chip brush. Then we're going to pour out the ColorTech 600 in kind of a ribbon pattern. We'll then use our squeegee to move the material around and if this was uh, in the directions of the compass we'll say that we're taking the squeegee north to south. After squeegeeing north to south, we're going to back roll east to west. And this is important because it helps lay down the material and make it look really nice. Once the floor is squeegeed and back rolled and the epoxy is looking good, we're going to throw our flake into it. And we're going to broadcast to rejection, which just means that we're going to throw enough flake that we can't see any of the shiny spots or any of the epoxy showing through. But the flake is covering everything. And we do that in kind of a feeding the chickens motion, where we just let the flake fall onto the floor. We've allowed the epoxy to cure overnight, and now we need to get rid of any of the flake that didn't stick into the epoxy. And the easiest way to do that is to round it up with a leaf blower. And we usually push the flake into a corner or a wall, as you can see, and then we sweep up any of the excess, since that flake can be used once or twice again. If there were any spots that we missed, we could patch those with that flake, or we could just use the flake on an entirely different project. Now that we've got all of the flake cleaned up that we want to keep, we're going to run a floor scraper over the whole surface at a really shallow angle. That just helps knock down any flake that might be sticking up since once we coat it with an epoxy, those can turn into kind of a, a little razor blades that we don't want. After we've got everything scraped up, we're going to vacuum the surface just to help get any flakes that might still be on there so that they don't end up in our top coat. We're getting dangerously close to being done now. We've scraped the floor, we've vacuumed it, we've pulled up our masking tape and we've reapplied new masking tape, and now it's time to put down our clear coat. We're going to use UV Shield as our clear coat. It's 100% solids epoxy, which means that when we put it down at about 14 mils, it's going to cure out to 14 mils. The mix ratio on the UV Shield is a 2 to 1 which means we're gonna put all of part B into part A in our kit here. And then we're just gonna mix that up for about two to three minutes to help make sure that we get all of the hardener to react with the resin so that when we put it down on our floor, it goes hard. One thing to note about 100% solids epoxies is that you don't ever want to leave them in mass or they'll start to react and go hard. So we're going to pour a thin ribbon along the edge here. Then we're going to pour the rest out onto the surface. Just like with our ColorTech 600 WB, we're going to take our squeegee and go north to south. going to take our back roll again and just back roll the whole surface to knock the windrows out of the epoxy and just make it look really really nice. Alright, this is basically a finished floor and this would be an amazing trailer to have. However, we're going to be storing a 1972 Volkswagen Resto modded bus and uh, drips a little bit of oil, a little bit of tranny fluid. 
So we want to really make sure that this gets good and protected. So we're going to apply a polyaspartic top coat. Same method as when we put down the clear coat. However, we're just going to buff up the surface with a, uh, our black pad on our, our buffing machine before we do that, just to make sure that we get some good adhesion on the polyaspartic. And after that, this floor is done. The mix ratio on the TK2425 is a one to one. So we're just gonna add equal parts into our bucket here. And we'll mix it up for again about three to four minutes just to make sure that all of part A and part B react with each other. One of the differences between 100% solid epoxies and polyaspartics is that polyaspartics can stay in mass. So we're just going to pour out a little bit of what we need and then again squeegee north to south. After we've squeegeed, we're going to back roll once again. And the back rolling really is the most important part because it knocks down all of the windrows and it just helps these epoxies and polyaspartics lay down and look glass smooth. We hope you've enjoyed watching us turn this trailer from a dirty dingy, ordinary car hauler into something beautiful that you could eat a Thanksgiving dinner on. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button, like the video, stay tuned for some new videos that we have planned on coming out soon.